One last time, it's a line we've been hearing for the past two years now, making us aware that Uncharted 4 A Thief's End will close off one of our favorite gaming series with an epic, all-out conclusion, and it's finally here. With this mindset, I went into the game, but by the time I ultimately rolled the credits, I realized that even though the story might have gotten its conclusion, Uncharted 4 felt like something else entirely. From the eerie view of a trapped skeleton in the silent main menu to the mysterious jungle sounds mixed into the main theme, it was something new. A much bigger, grounded adventure that didn't revolve around crazy set pieces, explosions and gunfire, but rather that true feeling of being an explorer. Nathan Drake leaves us behind with a bang, an experience that we'll still remember for years to come. Set three years after the events of the last game, Nathan Drake is living a normal life with his wife Elena as a retired fortune hunter, having sworn to each other never to put their lives on the line again. That all changes when Nathan's brother Sam shows up, who he thought had been dead for 15 years. Sam's life is at risk and he needs help finding the treasure of pirate captain Henry Avery, downright forcing Nathan to go back to his old life in order to help his brother out. But that obviously cannot come without its consequences, the main theme throughout the game. Not only are they chased by two antagonists, Rafe and Nadine, seeking the same treasure, Drake will also find several complications with his friends and family, who don't share the same goals and ideas. Northrog is known for their great storytelling, and that once again shows here. The new important characters, from Sam to the villains, are all very well developed and you learn to understand their thoughts more and more, with especially Rafe stealing the show every time he shows up on screen. For the dedicated fanbase, there's a ton of references to the old games that could certainly water your eyes depending on how sensitive you are to those kinds of things, with one particular chapter towards the beginning that will simply blow your mind. Drake, Sully and Elena's performances are great as can be expected, and fortunately all of them get a good share of screen time for this final adventure. The past three games have left us with a couple of remaining questions surrounding who Drake is and what motivates him, but these are luckily all cleared up here. The main storyline of Captain Henry Avery's lost treasure is intriguing and gets very interesting the deeper you get into it. Last of all, the big thing is obviously the ending, an essential part of this story as we are dealing with the final game here. I will definitely not give anything away, but I will say that even though I am okay with it, I was personally slightly disappointed, because I just expected a little more, and depending on the expectations of other fans, they could feel the same way too. Overall, the story is very well written and manages to connect all different settings in the game together nicely, especially since you'll be visiting quite a few different areas, mainly in the first half of the game. At the same time, my opinion on the ending impacted my experience a little bit. It won't blow the plot in the other games out of the water, but competing with the best of them, it definitely can. Superbus Magnum. Superbus Magnum. Graphically, the Uncharted games have always managed to get the absolute maximum out of their platforms. Uncharted 4 brings that to a complete new level, it is literally incredible. From the character models showing every single pore on Drake's face, to the small details and animations and all the rich environments in the game. Standing on top of a rooftop or mountain peak, looking down on your objective and seeing the beautiful vistas ahead, mostly in the jungle, sometimes had my jaw dropped. It truly is the best looking game I have seen to date, outdoing any that I've played on PS4. All of that comes with the cost of the game not being able to run at 60 frames a second, but therefore choosing 30 FPS. Luckily, it is steady at that, and though frame drops are sometimes present, it happens very rarely and certainly won't drag the experience down. It looks great, runs great, and regardless of a handful of bugs I encountered throughout my entire run through, this is simply the game you will show off to your friends or family as an example of what games can look like these days. Keep an eye out for anything man-made. Ah, you mean pirate me. <laughs> sure. 
The gameplay is the aspect that honestly surprised me the most. You would expect to see a final installment to slightly refine and improve on the foundation that was set by its predecessors, but that's not true at all here. More than anything, Uncharted 4 focuses on core gameplay rather than the scripted, highly linear adventures that the previous games were. Gun combat feels greatly responsive, with a large arsenal of weapons that I constantly find myself switching between, even containing some old pirate weaponry for you to use. The melee system has been slightly refined, only using square to hit an enemy and triangle to escape from being grabbed. Last of all, stealth has an even bigger focus this time around and it is once again possible to skip certain fights or reinforcement groups by sneaking past your enemies or taking them out silently. Even though it's the longest Uncharted game in the series, you actually kill fewer bad guys than ever before. Rather than combat encounters, the bigger focus is put on exploring the wide environments, finding your way across and platforming to get to otherwise unreachable areas, which is a very welcome shift. Drake has a few new tools at his disposal. The grappling hook is easily the biggest one, which makes for jumps to be bigger and to feel more exciting than ever before. Apart from that, you will use it to lower yourself to platforms far below you or even in fights to get the drop in an enemy who surely won't see you coming. Northrock has cut slightly on traditional Uncharted puzzles to make place for more environmental ones. The puzzles that are there are fun to solve but of course won't take you very long to do so. But they aren't the only thing that are less present, so are the scripted set pieces. We've all seen the massive Sam Pursuit demo involving Drake dragged through mud while shooting down vehicles that explode left and right. I can tell you it feels amazing to play this scene. The thing is it might as well be the biggest set piece in the game because the use of set pieces is way more subtle, comparable to Uncharted 2's approach and downright opposite to Uncharted 3. While it doesn't take away that what's in the game is all awesome to play, my only wish is there were just a few more, just because they're so fun and over the top, you can't help but be amazed playing them. In the end, the change in direction in terms of gameplay is easily the most noticeable difference. Fortunately, the pacing is great and more than ever, Uncharted 4 feels like a true adventure. A big achievement considering it already set the bar so high for itself. Sam! Special delivery! Whoa, 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 whoa. Ever since Uncharted 2, Northrock chooses to not just devote all their efforts to creating a great single player adventure, but also to create a multiplayer experience that will allow people to keep playing the game long after launch. Uncharted 4 is no different here. All elements from the campaign make a return, while symmetric layouts, a revive system and the radar cause for the multiplayer to be more team based than before. Divided across 8 varied maps and a couple of simple yet steady game modes, it's addictive, fun and super smooth, with a 60 frames per second refresh rate making fights all the more competitive. Players can collect relics and matches that can later be used to buy new skins, taunts and other cosmetical features, while the loadout system limits you to spending only a certain amount of points to watch your weapons, boosters, mysticals and other features. It's a balanced multiplayer mode that the fans will no doubt be getting a lot of enjoyment out of for the time to come, but whether the general public will notice it this time around remains to be the biggest question. It took me 13 hours to get through the entire game playing on normal difficulty while not really spending too much time exploring extra pathways and acquiring collectibles. This easily makes it the longest Uncharted game in the entire series. There are extra dialogue options, notes mainly left by dead pirates to collect, journal entries to obtain, around 100 treasures to find and a trophy list with this time around more original and fun trophies to get. Overall, you can no doubt get at least 40 hours out of the single player campaign, provided you play through it at least 2 or more times, go for all the side objectives within the game and try out the harder difficulties. Not just that, Northrock has added cool little extras, like different skins, weapons and cheats, but the highlight is the random modes. These were already present in previous games, but a whole bunch of them have been added here. For example, there's a cell shaded filter and another 8-bit random mode literally makes everything look pixelated. 
adapted. Even little details have been taken care of by making every single sound effect from music to gunshots sound like they come straight out of a console from 30 years ago. It's hilarious and an awesome addition, something I can only applaud because the game certainly did not need it. Combine this with the multiplayer mode that adds another dozen or in some cases hundreds of hours and rest assured you'll be playing this game for a very long time. Don't in the end, Uncharted 4 Thieves End is different yet perfect. It's a fresh new take on a formula we already knew for almost a decade that takes Nathan Drake's story and leaves us with a great final chapter. While there are just a few things I missed that rely solely on personal taste rather than actually objectively being bad, by which I mainly mean a true ending I could feel more than just okay with, everything the game itself does do is plain incredible. From the story that grabs you and never lets go, to the insane graphical detail and all the beautiful environments, to the more open approach in combat and traversal, to the real sense of exploration for the very first time, the game does absolutely nothing less than amazing. And while I still need more time to figure out if it's my actual favorite installment in the series, for now it can sit safely on the throne together with Uncharted 2 as the games that have truly blown me away. Uncharted 4 A Thief's End gets a 10 out of 10. For more coverage on Uncharted 4, please subscribe to my channel and then for now, thanks a lot for watching and hope to see you again next time.